My name is Clarence Thompson. I was born in Trinidad in the Caribbean, the southernmost of the Caribbean islands. My background, I'm a social scientist by training, and I have worked for British Petroleum as a human resources manager. I'm now retired. As I said, I am a social scientist, but I write poetry. I do a multiplicity of things. I teach business. I write business plans. I run. I'm the chairman of this gallery as well. I do a multiplicity of things. One of the most important had is being the chairman of the West Indian Standing Conference. The West Indian Standing Conference was formed back in 1958 as a consequence of the Notting Hill riots in which and later in 1959 a man called Kelso Cochran from the Caribbean was killed in circumstances quite similar to that of Stephen Lawrence. And we decided to form an, an organization in order to bridge the gap because it was based on race. It was a racial killing. Employment, we used to go down to the labor exchange on, in, on Loughborough there. And there the job applications and vacancies were stamped in red, NCP. And that didn't mean national car park. It meant no colored person need apply. And that was the thing. Today, you cannot do that. Let me tell you a little, uh, another story. It was one of a group called Presentation Housing Association. We formed that in 1968. And then during that period, they used to advertise rooms and flats to let. And the notices in the shop windows would say, rooms and flats to let, no children, no Irish, no dogs, no coloreds. That's what it said. And then there was a gentleman called Neil Waits from the Waits Foundation, which is in Norbury. He didn't like that, and he said to us, we must form a housing association to address the needs of the people from that community. We did so, and today, Presentation Housing Association, though I do not have much to do with it now, but I was a member of it, an active member from 1968 to 1986. But, you know, things happen, you move on and so on. But it now houses about 25,000 families, and I think that is quite an achievement. And there's people from all races, all walks of life, and uh, the, the, the housing is apportioned according to need, not on race, not on color, or anything like that. The Brixton riots was in 1981. Um, that was a difficult period because it was a period when we had many, many difficulties with the relationship between people of African heritage and the police. During my, my youthful years in here, I have known the, the police of Brixton, or just down here, going on an exercise which they call nigger hunting. And nigger hunting meant that when we first came here that we were prime targets for abuse. And you were not abused because you did anything wrong. You were abused because you were of a different pigmentation. And that's what it was about. And so, the Brixton riots came about when young people, they, they went through a process called SUS. It was at the time of the, the Tory government, because Maggie Thatcher had just become prime minister in 1979. And it was the attitude which led to it. There was a kind of arrogance. And pe they didn't care about how people felt, or what people felt, and so on. They didn't take any of this into concern. And so it just took one little incident and the whole place was on fire. And we tried to warn them from the West Indian Standing Conference, but no one took any notice of us. And that is what is happening today as well, because we told them about the incidents with the knives as well back in 1989. So it's almost 20 years ago, and today it's out of control. So you know, many times it happened, things happen, 
it is normally the fault of the people who are making the decisions. They don't understand, and sometimes we think that they really don't care. The 198 was formed back in 1988. There were two people, I used to teach business at the time down in Tooton Broadway, and two people came to me, the lady is called Zoe, and with her partner, John. They came and started talking about creating a gallery, but they wanted it to be a private affair. And I said to them, it should be a community affair. And if you did it as a community affair, there's a possibility of getting grants and really making it popular and so on. They took my advice, and the rest is history. Art is a way of expressing ideas, uh, you know, you have the performing arts, you have the visual arts, and this is the visual. And um, I'm chairman here, and I wanted to make sure that there was an opportunity for young people to show their, their, their work in, in the gallery. Because when this organization was formed, there wasn't a space for young people of African heritage especially to be able to show their work. And this became the ideal spot. We will grow old, and we have to pass the mantle of responsibility from me to you. It's like running a relay race. You have your leg to run. I must start it off, and I will then pass the baton on to you. You must then take it on to the next person. And if you look at the analogy that I'm talking about, it's about passing that responsibility so that young people can fulfill their full potential. Anything that you want you should be able to achieve it. Do not accept anyone telling you that you cannot. You say that you can and go after it. Plan it, work at it, do it, do it, deliver it.